Hey, welcome back, Forest Knight, also known as the Media Dude on Facebook and Twitter, over here at Media Dude Marketing out in St. Louis. Welcome back to another edition of the ILN Blog Work Series. In this edition of the ILN Blog Work Series, we're going to review the seven essential elements of any blog or website, or AKA, what the F is that on your website? The seven essential elements of any web page, so web page or blog page, we're going to talk about how it's laid off, we're going to talk about the F, if actually go this way, your F, and how that's laid out, and how people's eyeballs sort of travel across the page, top to bottom, left to right, as I like to call it, laid out, so that you'll get a tip. Uh, we're going to cover the header, we'll cover the menu, we should talk about the menu, the content, the sidebar, the footer, uh, widgets, the page, and the background, and these basically apply to anything, it'll apply to your Facebook page, it'll apply to your web page. Hopefully this information will help you out. First to start, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to show you a couple of examples here. We're going to talk about the header. Let's jump over and talk about the header. One of my favorite sites is uh, Yellow Pages Social. You can see they've got some of their brand going up here. They sort of tell you their local social made easy. Uh, they've got a shopping cart. The first thing that you see when you come to this page, and this is just for you to look at, is where do you focus? Where do your eyeballs go? Typically, most people are going to start in the upper left-hand corner. They read uh, top to bottom, left to right. So they would come here. They're going to sort of scroll across this way. They're going to move down the page like this. They're going to hit up. And you'll notice if you have a website or a blog site and you don't have your contact information over here, you are shooting yourself in the foot. Now, you may have some people say they don't have a phone number. People have to have phone numbers. I'm going to give you a perfect example. I track everything that I do in sales. Um, this last month, I, we had about 506 leads that came in through uh, outside advertising that we had come into our system. Out of those 506 uh, leads that we got, we generated about 67 sales. Every single one of those sales, and we talked about generating leads on advertising, we noticed this, that if the lead came in and it didn't have a phone number attached to where we could physically pick up the phone and call them and make contact with them, create that personal connection with them, it did not result in a sale. We've tracked this month after month after month after month. So the theory is, is when you create a, a website or you create a lead capture page or you do something and you're not capturing that person's phone number, and I'm not saying this all the time, the person is probably interested they just may not end up buying from you. They may end up buying from somebody, but they're going to buy to the, they're going to buy from the person that they're probably going to talk to either through a chat, an online active chat, which is sort of like I call it uh, video conferencing or real time conferencing, so an online chat or a phone call. They'll most likely end up buying from you in one of those mediums. If you have a way, a vehicle to move people over to Facebook, and you can chat on Facebook, or you can get into a Google Hangout, and you can do that. You can chat with them. And if you have a physical conversation with that person. There's about a 99% chance of an increase that you're going to get a sale. And for those of you guys that are crunching numbers, 506 uh, uh, leads that we got, 67 sales, pretty cool numbers, pretty cool percentage. I think it comes out to about 14%. And we do that month after month after month after month after month because we have cool things like this, like your phone number. Now here, some people may not be able to have a 24-7 uh, sell support line set up like these guys over here at Yellow Pages Social. That you can see as you move your as you move down the page again. They're coming down, and this is called the F on the page that we're talking about here. It moves down, and you've got your content in this area. Eyeballs come across here. Uh, you've got your main uh, ad or your current ad, current special offer right in the middle of the page. You've got some other content over here. Now, typically, people don't pay a lot of attention to the content on this side of the page unless it's sort of repetitive. So recommend here, uh, again, contact information here for the local office here in St. Louis. As you move down the page, if it's repetitive, you have the same thing. This is our actual Twitter feed coming down there. It's just uh, yellow. But most of the people are going to see this. They're going to keep, keep their content sort of above the fold in this area here. If you've got to scroll down, there's a pretty good chance that you're probably losing business. Here's another example. This is our uh, Media Dude marketing page, and again, you can see now I've sort of violated uh, one of the things I just told you about. It's a phone number, uh, contact information on this page, and we'll, we'll sort of explain that. Because we've got our video in this area, and this is sort of what we call a sales video. It, it walks through, and it, it 
discusses the opportunity the number one reason why almost everyone fails online and how we solve it so the video is here at the end of the video it instructs people to if they want to find out what that that one thing is they'll fill out this information here and they'll get access it'll take them to the next page and we can sort of move on from there from the sales letter so this is sort of a type of a sales letter uh, type kind of page we've also created and used the same tactic in a standalone lead capture page when we're talking about this type of stuff I know I'm going all over the page I was going to talk about the header and the menu and the content and the sidebar and the footer and the page but I want to give you this idea because it's it's here we can talk about it we can take notes you can always ask me questions Actually, just look me up on Facebook as the media dude. Drop a question right into my news feed, and I'll uh, reply to it there very, very quickly. Or you can send me a text message if you like to 314-498-7688. Introduce yourself, ask your question, and I'll get back to you as well. This is your header up in the top. This is where you're going to discuss and talk about who you are and what you do. This can be some graphics. It can be your name. Um, it, it can sort of tell people what you do. We're a social media advertising agency and marketing solution provider. Our mission is to equip business owners and entrepreneurs with the tools and knowledge to succeed and grow their business. Very simple. We want to give you the tools to help you succeed in your business, whatever that is. And you can provide them and give them an idea of what you do up here. As you can see, let's jump back over to Yellow Pages. You can see that here. So this is their header up on the top. And again, it's their, their business name. It also includes their website address, which is sort of smart, especially for an online company promoting themselves online. They're, uh, they specialize in local social media. In other words, they want to make sure that people are getting found locally. Because if you're looking for a plumber, a roofer, uh, an air conditioning contractor, a house painter, or something like that, you're most likely going to want to get somebody from your immediate community. You want to keep the dollars in your community. You want to make sure they're networked in your community. You want to make sure, probably make sure they're in good standing with the Better Business Bureau, and so on and so forth. So that's the things that you want to look at when you're putting the page together. This is your header up in the top. Jumping down to the menu, we jumped in that a little bit, and you'll see there's sort of a dual menu here. The menu up here, they've got their home page. They've got some ICANN disclaimers that has to do with selling domains. They've got uh, an account login, so when people come in and buy from them, they come back here, they click on that, they can log in using their credentials. You can connect with them on Facebook, you can follow them on Twitter, they can watch a YouTube video from some of the stuff that they posted as well, which is really cool. And of course, they've got their uh, uh, additional menus here, domain names, web hosting, secure socket layers, your email accounts, your marketing uh, stuff, and your website. So they've got all that information in the menu. Now, menus can be set up uh, two ways. You can have a static, solid menu here. These menus can direct to other pages. They can stay in your website. You create the menu so it opens up into a pop-up and things like that. And again, that's some of the techie things that you'll need to discuss with your website developer when they're putting that stuff together. The menu, usually it's below the header. But sometimes menus can split. You can have the menu up here. You can have the menu here. And also, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll have the menu at the bottom with your terms, your privacy disclaimers, and all that stuff. The terms of terms of use, your privacy policy, and all that can also be in the bottom. So you can have your menu in multiple, multiple places. Some websites will have a floating menu. So as you move down the screen, as you move down the screen, the menu sort of chases you down the screen. They'll have multiple pop-ups. Um, some people say you want to have pop-ups. Some don't. But sometimes there's pop-up blockers and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, make your site as accessible as possible. You also want to make sure that it's mobile ready so that if somebody accesses this device right here, it's very, very important. We were talking about marketing earlier. One of the things that we do is when we communicate with somebody who has a phone number, we know that the person that has a phone number, their chances of, of increasing a sale are huge. So when we send them a text message that says, hey, we're trying to communicate with you, or here's a video link, or here's a product information, and it comes into their smartphone, there's a pretty good chance that they're going to reply back. They're going to tell you something. You got the video, love the video, stop sending me messages, take me off your list. It's instant communication if you can communicate with them mobily. And if your site is up mobile and somebody can access that, that and their their uh, yellow pages social dot uh, com if you haven't seen their mobile site it's great um, the way they have it set up it's just really easy to use it's easy to see on a smartphone it's easy to access um, jumping back to uh, our other page here as you notice you go down now this is a blog website and what we recommend over here at Media Dude Marketing if you're going to build a website we highly recommend it be a blog website and the reason we do this is because you want to have uh, dimension and depth in your site you want to have your header and some of your branding stuff but you want to be able to communicate 
a basic website is static. They're they're built exactly the same way. Uh, your your uh, website guys got to go in and add the header and install the header and install the graphics and install the menu. All that stuff works the same. The difference in a blog is in a blog you're going to have information like the post that you're seeing right now. The current post is how to add it, how to add a header to your WordPress blog. But as soon as we're done with this post, the post that we're doing is going to pop up right here at the top and it creates it. When we install and push that post and submit that post, it's automatically going to tell Google, hey. Uh, Forest over in St. Louis, also known as the Media Dude from Media Dude Marketing, just submitted another post. It pings the search engine and say there's more information out there, which makes it an active site, which is really cool. We've also set up a feature so that when we do these posts, these posts are automatically going to link into our Facebook page. We'll have pages on our Facebook page that actually mirror these. So we're also pushing that post to Facebook automatically. When it hits Facebook, it automatically tells Twitter. So all of those 41,000 people, and I've done this all with one single post. Now you can create some of those same kind of features on a website, but uh, again, you can't um, update a website the way you can a, a blog post. So if you're thinking about it, if you're a new business owner, you're not quite sure, do I want to build a website? Do I want to build, uh, do I want to have a blog? I recommend you have a blog website. Now, a blog site can function exactly like a web page. You can have your products, you can have your services, you can have standalone single pages, you can have sales pages, you can have video pages, you can build those, and you can have your blog, which is your active function going on as well. So that's some of the really cool stuff that you can have. Next, we're talking about sidebar. Sidebar is used to display ads and other features content, usually on the right side of the page. That's this over here, as you can see. This is some sidebar information on this blog. We've got our address here. We've got our Facebook feed. We've got our, our latest posts. Uh, again, we've got a, a, another ad. We've got our recent posts. We've got our categories. We've got Twitter, so on and so forth at the bottom. And when we jump back over here to Yellow Pages Social, you'll notice that their sidebar is sort of to its split. They've got a sidebar here that they're using their Twitter feed on, and they've got their menu again over here on this left side so that people can jump into it. This is more of a corporate static site, a little bit different than you would have in a blog site. So you've got two of those function, two of the functionalities there and two different types of sites that you'd be looking at. Your sidebar. Jumping down, we'll get into the footer. The footer is simply this stuff down here in the bottom. The footer can do multiple things. The footer um, is used to display credits, copyrights, trademarks, again, the navigation menu, your privacy policy, your legal terms and conditions, um, what you can, what you can't do sometimes. And what I recommend people do is add their, in, include their address down in here somewhere as well because your address is also searchable on Google. So if somebody does a Google search for something in their local geographic area, if you have your address on the top of your site, on the bottom of your site, in your footer, in your sidebar somewhere, and you build it in as a text versus putting in it as an image, that's going to be searchable on Google. And a lot of people use these devices right here to find stuff. I was in uh, a little town here uh, down the road in Ferguson a little while ago, sitting in front of a bicycle shop, did a search for bicycle shops, and the nearest bicycle shop showed up four miles away when I was sitting in front of this one. The reason his shop didn't show up is because he didn't have his website set up correctly. He didn't have his Facebook page set up correctly. He didn't have anything formatted to let Google and the search engines know that he had a bicycle shop there, although he had spent $3,000 on his website. I didn't get it. I don't know what his website is. His website was beautiful and gorgeous and really sexy, but his website guy didn't have a clue about marketing and getting found on the internet. So just because you have a website guy that can be build a beautiful website doesn't mean they understand the back end working and how to get an SEO and how to get it found and how to get found in your local market. And basically the page, pages are a little bit different when you start getting into uh, websites. They all function the same. Here you see you've got multiple pages down here. You can click on different things like email plans, express email marketing. So on Yellow Pages Social, you click on their email marketing page. It comes over and they've got a web page here. You'll notice their header comes across. They've still got all their links and everything up here. You can scroll down and you see they've got sort of a sales page so that somebody can buy directly from the page. You scroll down to the bottom. Again, you're going to see the footer uh, down in this area on the bottom of the page. It goes. And then your, your background is this area back in here. How do you want this to look? Some people add images. Some people just want to have color. Um, 
as we're as we're building our site, we may end up taking this eagle and pulling it down to this area. Some people like it cluttered. Some people like it clean. My recommendation is to sort of keep this area in the back clean because you want to try and keep people's eyeballs focused in the middle here. Remember that F? We've got the top letter of the F. So we've got the middle letter of the F coming across. And as people come down the page, they're going to see these. Now, what's really cool about a blog and having a sidebar is you've got an F on each one of these blog posts. So if somebody comes into here, in other words, how to set up and install your WordPress site, if I click on this page and open up this post, everything up here stays the same. Okay? But I roll down in, and now my post is just a little bit different. It's back in the F. So you're going to do top to bottom. Left to right, so they're going to come across, they're going to see this, they're going to see this ad again, how to set up and install your WordPress site, they're going to click on the video, it's going to play, we've got all the contents below, and again, it's top to bottom, left to right, so they're going to read down the page, every time they come across, they're going to see this information over here, every time they come across, they're going to see this information over here. And this concludes this edition of the Island Blog Work Series. This is Forrest Knight, also known as the Media Dude on Facebook and Twitter, over here at Media Dude Marketing out in St. Louis. Be true to you and do what you do. We'll see you on the next video.